seeking it for. Okay, we're back. Now, what we've done during the break is we turned the pot on. We turned it up to 650 degrees. I've taken a bunch of wheel weights, taken them by the handful, dumped them in there. Now, for those of you who are going to use wheel weights for casting, the problem we're running into now is all the zinc and the steel wheel weights that are out there. Up here in Colorado, it didn't become a problem until about two years ago. You guys out in California, you've probably been putting up with it for several years. Uh, there's two ways to separate your weights from the lead, the steel, and the zinc. Take a weight, take a pair of side cutters, and bend it. If it bends like that, it's lead. Take another wheel weight, same side cutters, put it on there. If it won't bend, it's steel or zinc. It's going to be useless. But that's going to take you a long time to go through however many buckets of wheel weights you got. I think uh, last winter I melted 1,400 pounds. It'd take half the winter to do that. The easier way is just set your pot. Now if you use a, uh, a lee pot that doesn't have an accurate thermostat or something on it, get yourself an accurate thermometer. Turn your pot up, heat it up to 650 degrees. Lead melts at about 631. Zinc melts at about 100, 110 degrees higher. You just take your weights, dump them in the pot. That's all there is to it. Now let me just grab a few more weights here. We'll dump them in the pot and while that's melting we'll show you a couple other things. Just, you don't have to worry about separating them. Just grab a bunch of them, dump them in. Alright, we won't fill the pot. That's just going to take too long. Now, while we're waiting for that to melt, let's go over one of the very, very important things about casting. You have to flux your alloy, and you have to flux it often. Now, people say, gee, what, what's fluxing for? Your alloy is going to be comprised of three different main components. Lead, obviously. Antimony, which adds hardness to the lead. And tin. Now, tin adds only a third of the hardness that antimony does, but it helps the alloy fill out the cavity in your mold. Lead wheel weights contain all three. And straight wheel weight is going to be good up to about 1,200 feet a second in a pistol bullet. You don't need to add linotype or anything else. If you're going to go over that, you know, you'll have to do some different things. But you need to flux it because of the different density of the antimony and tin. It'll float to the top in your alloy. So when you're pouring your, your bullets, you're going to get an abnormally high level of lead in the bullets with no tin or antimony. So what do you use for flux? There's a million different things. You can use sawdust. You can use kitty litter. Uh, I've used them in the past. They're messy. I don't like them. Basically, you want to use anything that creates carbon. The easiest thing to use is wax. Now, that wax can be in the form of bullet lube. As an example, when you're sizing your bullets, when you're adjusting dies, you're always going to have a few that don't come out right. You're going to have excess lube and whatnot. Just put them in a little tray right next to your pot. When you need to need to start fluxing, just take a couple of them, put them in. You'll see a little bit of smoke rising here. You can use candles. After you've had a nice romantic dinner and whatnot, and you've got a candle that ends up looking like that, steal it from Mama. Okay? Take a knife, a knife, just shave off some of the wax. What I use mostly is golf wax. All right, it comes in a block like this. There's four of them in the box. What this is used for is sealing mason jars. If you're canning fruit or whatever, I get these at Wally World. They're in the little canning section. I think that whole box cost 88 cents. All right, the easiest thing to do. Now here's one that I've been using. It was on the block. 
the easiest thing to do is just take your knife, put your block down, and just shave off some of the wax. That simple. And just pick up the shavings, dump them in the pot. Now you're going to see some smoke. There's two different ways to do it. You can just let it smoke. It's just a candle. It's not going to hurt anything. Or you can take a match, dump it in, and it'll burn the smoke off. Put your little glove on, or your welding gloves if you're a noob. I use a piece of dowel rod. You can see how that's all burnt down. This is how they start. I just buy them in four feet sections and just cut off a foot of it. Just take your little dowel rod and mix it. That's all there is to it. Just mix the flux into your alloy. Stir it good. After a minute or so, the flame will go out. Just keep stirring it. When the flame goes out, you'll have a little bit more smoke. Fan takes care of it, or the open window takes care of it, whatever. Some people use a slotted spoon. I don't. This spoon I stole from my mother when I was about 13 years old. One thing you want to do is let the spoon get hot. Put it in your alloy, twirl it around for a while. Let it get hot. That'll keep the alloy from sticking to the spoon. And then just simply push all your clips from your wheel weights over into a corner, scoop them out, drop them into an aluminum pan. If you don't have an aluminum pan, you can go to Wally World and get some of those little bread pans. The uh, tin foil ones works fine. They could cost you uh, like a dollar and a half for three of them. Now, every time you add either wheel weights or sprue to your alloy, flux it. You cannot flux too much. You can certainly flux not enough. I flex whenever I'm going to skim clips off the alloy. I flux about every 10 to 15 minutes while I'm casting. So it, it's constant flux while you're casting. If you do that, you're not going to have any problems. You're going to get good alloy coming out of the pour. You're going to have nice sharp edges on your bullets and your grease grooves and your crimping groove. You cannot flux too much. If you don't flux enough, you're going to have all kinds of problems. Okay? Now, we're still letting it heat up. Alright, now, let's assume that we've filled the pot. Oh, the cameraman just hit the camera. Look, way to go. Good thing I'm not paying him union wages. Let's assume we have a full pot here. Okay, we've put all our wheel weights in. All the zinc has risen to the top and everything. We've skimmed everything off. What we want to do then is raise the temperature. I cast it somewhere around 700, 710 degrees works fine for me but again I'm using all iron molds maybe with aluminum molds you have to adjust your temperature but simply turn your pot up there we are right at 700 degrees let that come up to temperature now on the uh, pro melt a little light comes on here on the switch when it gets up to 700 degrees that light will turn off then I know I'm ready to start casting what I do is I put my molds on the warming shelf right up here from the time I turn the pot on. So by the time this gets up to 700 degrees, my molds are hot. And I know that within the first two or three drops of the mold, I'm going to start having good bolts. Okay? Now, one other thing that you might want to do, and this is just if you guys want to cast indoors. I know a lot of you want to do all the smelting and stuff outside. That's great. I'm not doing it. I stay in the gun room. But if you're going to cast inside, especially if you ever have Zombie Steve come up to your house to do a little casting, uh, unfortunately that happens to me quite often, you might want to take a little precaution. Now what I do, 
I'm going to put my little glove on here. Take my little ingot away. I've got three screws through the base plate of this pot. What that does, it makes it so it can't tip over. Now, if I was just using this pot and nobody else was, I wouldn't worry about the screws. You can see it has a nice sturdy base. But because Zombie Steve comes up here, I have to take precautions. Now, I learned this because I read an article that Zombie Steve had taken a vacation with his lovely wife to Paris and when French found out he was coming there, they bolted down the Eiffel Tower just because of Zombie Steve. So I've taken the precaution. All right, you can do that. It's not going to tip over. The last thing in the world you want to do is have a pot of molten lead in your lap. That's not fun. All right, what we're going to do is we'll just go ahead, uh, we'll fade to black or we'll figure out something on the editing here. We'll let this get up to temperature. We'll come back. We'll do a couple minutes of, uh, of casting, and you can see how easy it is. All right? Okay, maybe we'll hand out snacks to the uh, studio. Oh, yeah, they like that. We'll give them a few snacks while we're waiting for it to warm up. Okay, we'll see you back here in just a little bit. Bye-bye.